It's part four of the uh, skeletal muscles. Here we are on page 335. We're still working with head and neck and uh, we're particularly checking out now very deeply into the neck region and uh, what we have here it's a little bit hard to make out but you have to imagine somebody has swallowed food and the esophagus right here can you see that is right behind the trachea they actually uh, embryologically and fetally they form together All right so they they have a strong relationship the uh, esophagus actually fits into the uh, smooth muscle behind the trachea the trachea has a little bit of smooth muscle right there so when you're swallowing something it goes down now notice that we have um, these pharyngeal constrictors the inferior right here here's the middle pharyngeal constrictor right there superior so it begins at the pharynx and you swallow and there's a wave like contraction that comes down here and it's powered by the vagus okay so that's what you need to know the vagus cranial nerve number 10 it's responsible for everything about swallowing and it's responsible for the digestive system all the way down through the stomach and the small intestine and significant parts of the large intestine okay so those are the constrictors just the way you like it okay now um we're going to move on to um some deep muscles and then we'll pick up uh how are we doing that yeah i guess um so right here we have uh, we're actually going to begin with these deeper muscles right here um uh, let's take a look here we'll go deep and then we'll come out to a more superficial muscle over there we're going to be having three uh muscles right here and uh these are the scalenes Notice that they're um, connected to the uh, transverse processes of cervical vertebra, and that the first two come down to rib number one, and this one comes down to rib number two. And as you, uh, as you get close here to uh, what's going on, you'll notice that this is the anterior, and that this is the posterior back here, this is the middle, and you'll notice that the anterior and the middle form a little opening right here above rib number one and it's a triangular opening so I've pointed to it right there and um, so it's important for us to understand this here in the book uh, we have scalenes anterior middle anterior uh, located uh, laterally that we just noticed origin is the uh, cervical vertebra uh, insertion is the uh, first two ribs. Um, it does play a role in breathing, actually, with forced inspiration, uh, but it also does, uh, you can reverse the origin insertion and you can flex and rotate the neck. So it works both ways, shall we say. Okay, whoops, where are we? There we are right here. Um, so the idea here is that you could, you could uh, rotate the neck having this as the origin, or you could uh, stabilize this and breathe deeply, throw the head back and take a deep breath in forced uh, inspiration. Now, there's an important anatomical landmark here, so we have to consider the regional thing that's going on. What you'll notice here is that here we have a rib cage. The heart is in here. How are you going to get the blood out of the rib cage up to the head and neck and then out to the upper extremities? You do it by coming up through the top of the rib cage and then going through this little tiny opening right there. Okay, and the same would be the case for the nerves. You have to have nerves that power the upper extremities, you know, all of the muscles of the arm, the forearm, and the, and the hand. So I'm going to uh, bring to your attention this book right here, which is our atlas that we uh, use for um, cadaver dissection. And uh, we're going to take a look at, here's the first rib, here's the heart. We're missing the sternum here. Over here is the first rib again, second rib, uh, second rib, first rib. And so what we're looking at here is we're looking at how, how, the, um, how the blood exits the, uh, 
thoracic cavity, and it has it actually goes right behind the first scalene, and it's actually hugging right there at the top of the of the rib. Then we have all look at that coaxial cable there. These are uh, these are spinal nerves um, uh, going all the way from C5 to to T1, C5, 6, 7, 8, uh, and then T1. And uh, all of those spinal nerves are rearranged into uh, trunks. So C5, 6, 7, 8, T1, those are five spinal nerves that have rearranged all of their uh, neurons into three major trunks. And then they're going to rearrange again over here. This is called the brachial plexus, and this takes care of our upper extremity. So I'm bringing this to your attention uh, because this is a outlet syndrome um, spot here in the human body. It's between the anterior scalene and the middle scalene. And for those people who like to use um, backpacks and put the weight on their shoulders, you know, backpacks are supposed to actually have a good waist and hip belt, and they're supposed to be resting on your hips. Right, and uh, have you ever seen little kids in uh, grammar school uh, going with packs the size of their entire body, and they're, it's all resting on their shoulders? So this is, I often think of this. Um, we do have these uh, outlet syndromes where the hands get tingly and even go numb at times uh, if we're out in the forest carrying a big heavy pack, and any part of the weight is really on the shoulders. So um, at any rate. Uh, this is how we, uh, and there's always the, uh, try to imagine the early uh, programs of Star Trek. I know some of you probably uh, were not yet born, but nevertheless, um, <laughs> Mr. Spock used to stick his thumb um, right here um, behind, right here behind the, uh, right here would normally be the, uh, the clavicle. And if you stick your thumb back there or over here, you can actually do serious pain to uh, someone. Uh, with very little effort, you can try it on yourself. Put your put your finger gingerly, not too hard, behind your um, your clavicle, and see if you can feel that anterior scalene. And then go on either side and see what uh, Mr. Spock was doing there in Star Trek. So um, we'll be coming across this from time to time when we study the circulatory system. When we study on pay on uh, chapter 13, we're going to be studying the. Uh, peripheral nervous system, and we'll look at this again, but I'm just bringing it to your attention for the first time here. The anterior and the middle scalene form uh, with the rib a triangle, a triangular space, and all of this very important equipment is uh, like sneaking out that little corner there over the top of the first rib. Okay, so that's what we're looking at right here, and um, so, um, first uh, we have this anterior, then we have a middle, and then we have a posterior scaling. Okay, enough said about that. Now we have the sternocleidomastoid muscle right here. Uh, that would be spelled uh, sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid. The, uh, the nomenclature here is based on the bones. So the sternum, you see this little portion of the muscle here, it's a two bellied muscle. Sternum, uh, sternocleido, this is the clavicle, and it's going up to the mastoid of the temporal bone over here. So when we contract this muscle uh, unilaterally, we're going to sort of twist the head slightly, uh, and the head will sort of look diagonally. It'll pull down here, and you'll look up. Uh, if we use them together, uh, we actually bend the neck forward. So, and that's uh, being described right here, the sternocleidomastoid, uh, two-headed muscle, beginning with the manubrium of the sternum and the clavicle, going to the mastoid process. Um, it flexes and laterally rotates the head, depending on if you're using them together or singly. And this is really important. I need you to know that it's the cranial nerve 11. Cranial nerve 11. Um, this nerve actually passes right through this set of muscles, and it goes to one other muscle called uh, trapezius um, that will be picking up after a little while. Okay, so that concludes this particular little section.